It's a Thursday, October 21st, and it's the time for your Bobby this today morning news update. The Pan American Health Organization has expressed concern about the spike in COVID-19 cases in several Caribbean countries, including Barbados. In fact, PAHO Director Dr. Carissia Etienne during a weekly press conference held on Wednesday described the situation as severe. She said that there was a need for countries to continue to track and manage infections closely to detect and minimize community transmission. The Dominican Republic and Barbados are reporting over 40% jumps in new cases over the last week. In fact, half of Barbados's cumulative COVID infections since the pandemic began have been reported in the last month. Puerto Rico, Trinidad and Tobago and Martinique are also seeing a jump in new infections. And cases remain high in St. Martin, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, and the Cayman Islands. So we continue to urge countries, especially those in the Caribbean, to maintain and prioritize public health measures to control the spread of COVID. These measures, along with widespread vaccinations, are the best option to control outbreaks. Dr. Etienne said while overall vaccination coverage had reached 41% in Latin America and the Caribbean, surveillance will remain key to identifying new risks and responding to local infection hotspots. Surveillance has always been the eyes and ears to guide our COVID response. From when the first case was detected in our region, as we navigated our pandemic peaks, and as we continue to track emerging variants. As we look to the future, surveillance and early warning, integral components of disease control will remain essential to identifying new risks and managing and responding to this next phase of the pandemic. To improve and evolve epidemic surveillance in the region, countries must act locally. They must act smarter and act together. More and more, we're seeing how local hotspots, so to speak, are driving national trends. And that's why health authorities should have a clear picture of what is happening at the local level and quickly communicate both the risks and the public health measures needed to reduce transmission. Opposition leader Bishop Joseph Avali is lobbying for improved circumstances for women at the lower end of the economic scale in Barbados under the presidency of Dame Sandra Mason. He made the call after Dame Sandra was elected by members of both Houses of Parliament on Wednesday as the island's first non-executive head of state when Barbados becomes a parliamentary republic on November 30th. The advancement of women in our society, our economy, our governance structure is very evident and very welcome. But equally evident is the fact that the movement is taking place among women at the higher levels of socioeconomic life in Barbados, while women at the lower levels face a persistent reality of hardship and challenge. I speak of the likes of shop assistants, gas attendants, security guards, domestics, maids, factory workers, hotel workers, etc. It is my view that a high priority in the new republic headed by a woman, therefore, must be that we change that situation. Change in our constitutional status is without sufficiency of meaning unless we change for the better, and radically so, the lot the plight of our people. Bishop Athali made a specific call for a presidential commission to improve the situation of single mothers. It cannot be that we elect a woman as our first president, have a female as our prime minister, and not realize that a much more robust effort is imperatively and urgently needed to counter the trinity of evil, that is, economic exploitation of our women in the workplace, sexual harassment of our young ladies in vulnerable settings, 
or female domestic abuse now perceived as a cultural norm and par for the course. May I suggest humbly before I close, Mr. Speaker, and express the hope that with the fully expressed support of all political parties, we can see in the earliest practicable period of this new presidency, the setting up of a presidential commission mandated to lead in the development of a, na a national charter for single mothers in Barbados. Among our female population, this is a particular category of women with their own distinct challenges. The upcoming winter tourist season brightened again this week with the arrival of another flight out of the UK on the heels of an inaugural service from continental Europe. On Wednesday, Ireland's own Aer Lingus flew directly out of Manchester to the Grantley Adams International Airport. The aircraft will operate a twice weekly service until early November, then increase to three times per week and operate until April next year. So this is special for us, not just because obviously this is the first time that we have had uh, this level of airlift coming in from an Irish airline. We have uh, Aer Lingus coming in, obviously originating in, uh, in Ireland. Starting in this instance, they have just opened a brand new hub in Manchester. Uh, and this was the very first flight out of Manchester under the new Aer Lingus hub and it was here to Barbados. And so we're really excited. This is the second uh, new airline that we have welcomed to Barbados in just a few days. And we're looking forward to being able to have a strong winter season going forward with our existing partners and definitely with our new partners, including the new Aer Lingus flight. That was Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Senator Lisa Cummings. She explained that while some hoteliers have been reporting cancellations due to the sluggish vacation rate in Barbados, this was not the case for the majority, adding that in many cases, new bookings were making up for cancellations. We have not seen any uh, cessation in bookings for Barbados. In fact, what my understanding is from many of the, for the majority of partners in the industry is that our occupancy rates are high. They're certainly in excess of over 70, 80 percent, and some properties are actually full. We are seeing here at the Grand the Adams International Airport Every day, we're processing around 2,000 passengers. Most aircraft are coming in uh, with between 90 to 100% full. Sometimes you are unable even to get on a flight. So I think that if we were able to combine the additional airlift, the number of seats coming in on all of those flights, the fact that they're flying full, they have to be staying somewhere and they're staying in our hotel industry and our partners, and the majority of them are reporting that they are seeing very positive outlooks. For the winter season in fact in some cases some people have said september even is traditionally a really weak month for the tourism industry but this year it actually performed quite well there's regional and international news after this short break hi my name is michelle thompson i'm a visually impaired person i am also a member of the national united society of the blind of barbados i am vaccinated I took the vaccination due to the fact that I am diabetic, I'm asthmatic, and I also have high blood pressure. I had no side effects. Everything went calm and smooth, as my doctor said it would go. Please, people, go ahead and do the right thing. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region, parliamentarians in Antigua and Barbuda have issued a call for people in other country who are not yet vaccinated against COVID-19 to do so. We get more in this report from ABS News. It's been a month since the implementation of the government's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. In that time, the number of those fully vaccinated has climbed by over 10,000. However, members of parliament are urging more people to come forward. 
as the race towards herd immunity continues. Minister with Responsibility for Social Transformation and the Blue Economy, the Honorable Dean Jonas, warns the strain on the country's health sector is evident. Quite a few persons have died in who have not had coronavirus, but they have died because there were no resources in terms of beds and other resources at the hospital to tend to them. Works Minister the Honorable Lennox Weston says the issue of getting vaccinated is a civic duty. Without mincing his words, he argues much of the anti-vaccination rhetoric is founded in ignorance. If you kill yourself, I tell you all the time, it's okay. The earth has never refused a stupid body. Never! So if you don't want to take that vaccine, you walk about big and bold, you don't want a vaccine, you don't want a thing, you're not taking nothing, uh, it's Bill Gates, stay by yourself, have a good life, have a good death. Health Minister the Honorable Sir Malwin Joseph, however, views the arguments as ironic. All of the adults in Antigua who are refusing to take the vaccine, they got it when they were children. They're going around with the measles, mums, rubella vaccine in their system. And finally, the International Monetary Fund is predicting that inflation in Europe should subside in 2022. As such, the IMF is upgrading Europe's economic growth forecast, according to the head of the IMF's Europe Department, Alfred Kama. Increasingly resilient recovery is taking hold all across Europe, thanks to substantive policy support measures over the past year and a half. Advanced European eco economies are set to expand by 5.2% in 2021, 0.3 percentage points of GDP higher than we expected in our July update, and emerging market economies uh, will hit 6%, an upgrade of 1.1 percentage points. Uh, we are uh, expecting the uh, inflation surge, which we are seeing right now, uh, to fade out in uh, ne 2022, next year, and therefore we would actually expect that uh, there is very little impact uh, in the medium term on the productive capacity and the production of uh, the, the economy. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.